Good evening. Welcome everyone to tonight's uh, meeting of the City of Santa Cruz Planning Commission for September 19th, 2024. We're really glad to see you all here. Uh, could we have a call to order, or rather a roll call? Commissioner Dan? Here. Gordon? Here. Kennedy? Here. McKelvey? Here. Paul Hamas? Here. Thompson? Chair Conway? Here. Thank you. Do we have any statements of disqualification this evening? All right. Seeing none, we will move on to oral communications. This is the point in the agenda where the public is welcome to address the commission on items that are not on tonight's agenda, but that do fall within the purview of the Planning Commission. Would anybody like to speak to the commission on items not on tonight's agenda? Thank you. Seeing none, we will move on to the approval of minutes. I move to approve the minutes. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes of September 5th, 2024, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. And we will move on to the consent agenda. Um, the item before us on the consent agenda tonight is 1505 Ocean Street. That is project number CP24-0010. It's a special use permit and a design permit to install a new roof-mounted wireless te telecommunication facility that exceeds the maximum height limit on a lot in the CC zone district and on land within the Ocean Street area plan. The Bay Street Reservoirs, oh, whoops, sorry. Um, so, consent public hearings are items that are considered by staff to be routine in nature and can be acted upon in a single motion without a staff presentation um, if commissioners and, um, have no questions. Um, so, for starters, do any commissioners have questions on this item? Do not. You do? No. Do not. No. Okay, in that case, um, this is a public hearing. If any members of the public care to address the uh, commission on this item, you're welcome to do so now. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. I'll move approval. I'll second. All those, or I guess we'll need a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Dan? Yes. Gordon? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. McKelvey? Yes. Paul Hamas? Yes. Thompson? Uh, Chair Conway? Yes. Uh, with that, it is approved. Thank you. The next item on tonight's agenda, <coughs> also a public hearing, is 119 Madrone Street, project number CP24-0078, a master use permit and special use permit to convert an existing brew pub, Woodhouse Brewery, to a high-risk alcohol outlet and to allow for expanded live entertainment and events on a parcel located in the CT zone district. Could we have a staff report, please? Um, good evening, I'm Ryan Bain, Senior Planner. So before us tonight, we have a, uh, the Commission's gonna be considering a master use permit, special use permit to convert an existing uh, brew pub, the Woodhouse Brewery, uh, to a high-risk alcohol outlet and to allow for an expanded live entertainment, and to, ex to allow for live entertainment and events. Um, the subject parcel is uh, approximately 1.1 acre site on the southwest corner of River and Madrone Street, just south of the Highway 1 River Street intersection. Um, the commercial industrial site contains a number of buildings with a, a mix of uses, including offices, uh, warehouses, and the subject Woodhouse Brewing, uh, which is operating within a 3,650 square foot commercial building on the west side of the parcel. Um, kind of that yellow area is generally the location of the brewery and the subject uh, entertainment uh, events that we're talking about. 
So a little background, um, in 2017, the, the city zoning administrator approved an administrative use permit for a beer manufacturing facility at this location. And then in 2019, um, the Z approved um, the establishment of a low-risk alcohol outlet um, for the brewery, um, so brew pub, which allowed a restaurant with uh, beer service and outdoor seating. Um, so the current AUP allows for approximately 2,660 square feet of the existing building to be utilized as beer manufacturing and storage, while 990 square feet is open to the public for eating and drinking. Um, in July of 2023, um, the city received a formal complaint uh, um, that regarding operations at the brewery and a code enforcement case was opened up for investigation. Um, the complaint involved um, loud outdoor music coming from the brewery several nights a week. Um, this was due to amplified entertainment that was occurring on the outdoor stage adjacent to the outdoor seating, um, as well as occasional um, planned outdoor events. So um, city staff has been working with the brewery owners to resolve this issue over the past few months. And it was determined that the owners should apply for a special use permit, master use permit, to allow outdoor entertainment and events at the site. Um, so this expansion of the use would elevate the brew pub from a low risk alcohol outlet um, to a high risk outlet per our um, alcohol beverage section of our ordinance and requires a special use permit approval by the city uh, planning commission. So um, in terms of definitions, a, a high risk uh, alcohol outlet, the definition is here, but as you can see, it's a retail outlet where alcoholic beverages are sold and then also involve um, uh, live entertainment uh, occurring on the site or as part of the use. Um, as previously mentioned, the brewery is currently operating under an AUP as a low risk, but with the proposed live entertainment, the use would fall into the high risk uh, category per our ordinance. So um, live entertainment is defined as music, comedy, readings, dancing, acting, or other entertainment, um, and that's what's being proposed uh, as part of the, the brewery use. So in terms of what the applicants are proposing and, t and types of events and uses, that'll be in terms of entertainment and events, here's a list um, of several of the things that they've provided that they, they're looking to host at the site as part of the venue. So local bands, local makers, high, high school fundraisers, charitable causes, cultural festivals, art shows, et cetera, comedy nights. Um, so all of these are, are gonna be proposed as part of the events occurring uh, at the site. Um, here are the hours of operation that they've proposed. Um, generally, you're looking at you know some time from noon, um, but no later than than 10 o'clock. So the event stage um, borders the 2,000 square foot outdoor seating area, um, with the former parking lot proposed for incidental community space um, for events. Um, the applicant is not required to provide off-street parking for the use because the subject site is within a half mile of a major transit stop. But that being said, there are approximately 32 parking spaces located on the subject site uh, that are shared amongst the various uses. Uh, additionally, um, the Madrone Street where it's access has a number of on-street parking spaces that are regularly, regularly utilized by the brewery patrons. Uh, additionally, the, re the required uh, bike parking is provided on site. So a noise study was prepared um, to verify that the events would operate within the limits of the city's noise ordinance. Um, the noise cons consultants visited the site to measure the existing ambient noise levels and to quantify the noise levels from the brewery's sound system. Um, and in order to meet the ordinance criteria, it was determined that the sound system cannot exceed an average hourly noise level of 79 dBA at the center of the event area. Um, for a maximum of two hours between 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. within a 24-hour period. Uh, additionally, no amplified music or speech is allowed between 10 p.m. or I should say after 10, after 10 p.m. essentially, between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. So the study recommends that noise be monitored um, during events to maintain compliance with the ordinance and that the stage and sound system should be oriented uh, to the north away from the nearest residences to the southwest. Uh, operating within these parameters is calculated um, that the um, proposed uh, events would meet the City of Santa Cruz noise ordinance criteria. So implementation of the recommend recommendations of the noise study has been included as a condition of approval. So that being said, the project as conditioned meets all the uh, requirements 
required standards and findings for approval of the master and special use permit. And staff is therefore recommending approval um, based on the findings and conditions of approval that have been provided. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. We'll start. This is an opportunity for commissioners to ask questions of staff. Any questions? Go ahead. Commissioner McKelvey. Evening. So I have a couple of questions. Um, the categorization of the facility as high risk, um, is this solely because of the live entertainment? Correct. And when I read the list that you presented as entertainment and events, they don't seem to lend themselves to hazardous or high risk activities. Can you just flesh that out a little bit? Why? Um, well, live entertainment is music, mm -hmm. comedy, readings, dancing, acting, et cetera. Those are all things that are being proposed here. Okay. I, I understand. Yeah, I, I'm just, I just wonder if it would be helpful to explain that a little bit because you look at this list and it doesn't seem particularly. Do you have more question, a specific question because otherwise this will, will come in and do Okay, we can do that, yeah. Um, is the requirement in the condition, is the condition number, I think, 31 to post the a copy of the conditions of approval is that a typical um, that is actually right out of the ordinance I believe. okay all right and then um right out of our well this this is actually can definitely wait until the okay, okay good thanks any other questions of staff yes commissioner kennedy so i i would uh, where does the 10 p.m. cutoff come from? Is that from the acoustic report, or did the applicant volunteer that, or is that just what the ordinance states? Um, that's, that is from the acoustical report. Okay. That's, that's I should have the, read that part I mean, that is what they That's what they're proposing, but I think you maybe want to ask them specifically, but I, will. I believe that cutoff time is mainly due to the noise study. Uh, second question, I'm trying to visualize where the nearest residences to the site are, and I, I'm not being cute. I just can't really think yeah, it through. Yeah, I, I wonder that Can you point them out to us on the map? Um, the they're up, I think they're up Potrero. So you can see you can see Potrero. Oh, that row of, uh, so yeah, like condos up there. I think if you keep going down Potrero, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. it's 306, up on that 304, hill. 302. So I think maybe the track. Okay. The sound kind of travels up. Got it. Okay. And I understand sound travels all over the place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Uh, d um, oh. Chair, sorry. Um, I just also want to clarify that 10 p.m. is our um, noise ordinance as well. That's what I thought okay. I remembered. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And will the applicant have a presentation tonight? No presentation. No presentation. Okay. Thank you. Um, I did have a question. Oh, Go I'm ahead. sorry. You can uh, I was I was ready to move on to the public hearing. If you have a question, now is your time to ask a question. I just have a real quick question. Um, so this permit was initiated by a complaint, um, but I in the post packet correspondence, I didn't see any um, letters um, opposing this. Was that complaint was it worked out with that particular complainant? I have I I personally haven't had any contact with the complainant, but I have not received any information from them since you know, this application has been submitted. So. And there was no other correspondence that came in after? Just so what we have support, here is yeah. what there is? Okay, yep. great, that was it. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this point, um, th we will open the public hearing. Um, the commission would love to hear from you. If you're interested in addressing us, please, uh, we'll be, you can't really line up over here, but um, we'd appreciate it if you signed in before you speak. Um, and we'll take you in order that you come to the mic. Uh, and sure. it, it would be um, helpful if you could identify yourself and welcome. Good evening. Hi, my name is Joe Bryan. I'm a, uh, a local uh, engineer. I specialize in audio technology. I've started a company here in Santa Cruz. I work at a large fruit provider up in Silicon Valley. Um, I had some questions about the the noise level, and I believe the complaint said, that, uh, or, the, or the mitigation said something along the lines of 79 dB. Was that the proper number? I was referencing the noise study, yes. Okay. So 79 dB, uh, just as a 
point of reference, the nominal listening level for film and television in a listening space is approximately 82 dB. So that is 3 dB above what the threshold for the, the area is, just as a, as a nominal reference. So when you're sitting in your tel at home watching television, it's about 82 dB, 83 dB. So uh, one of the physical aspects of sound propagation in a semi-hemispherical area is it has about a 3 dB roll-off for every doubling of distance. So for a residence that is, you know, so using a reference point of the center of that area, that uh, going half the distance to the residence, the level will go down another 3 dB, another doubling of that, a quarter of that distance will go down another 3 dB, and so on. So the actual ambient listening level at the residences nearby will be significantly lower than an average listening level for a television or a radio inside the, inside the house. So that's a baseline for just how loud the sounds would actually be perceived. And typically there is an attenuation due to windows and walls of approximately 35 dB. So this provides a baseline for a nominal listening level. Great, thank you. Um, that's the first point. Okay. The other, I just want to make a comment about the, the, the cost that was imposed upon uh, Woodhouse for the listening study. We understand that it was quite expensive for them to do this. And furthermore, it shut down the live music community within Santa Cruz during the period of that study. So there has been very limited um, performance and music um, going on at this place. And that has had a profound impact on the cultural viability of Santa Cruz music scene. What else is considered one of the best places to play in town. And it's a host to quite a lot of very talented uh, musicians, local musicians, many of whom make their living um, performing live. Um, we should be encouraging uh, the cultural development of our community uh, and not be subjugated to the capricious complaints of individuals against a broader community. And that's my, that's my comment. Okay, thank you very much. Excuse me. Excuse me. Silence, please. Quiet. Let me tell you, this is a public hearing. Everybody is welcome. We're really glad to have everybody here. And for a lot of people, this is their first public hearing that they'll be speaking to. And it's really important to conduct yourselves in a way, and, and I'm not going to tolerate expressions of approval or denial, because everybody's opinion is welcome. So again, thank you for coming. And um, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of passion for this project. And I look forward to hearing everybody in an orderly manner. And again, if you could please introduce yourself. And how many people intend to speak tonight? Yeah, I wanted to jump in. Yeah. You can do take a short hands and I'll take consider care. time limit. How many people intend to speak? OK, good. And thank you. We really do want to hear from all of you. And that will have um, two minutes to speak for everybody. And I'll ask for to uh, time it. OK, thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Fisher. I have an office immediately adjacent to that in Building 42. We work into the evening, and we're architects. We do very quiet work. I'm speaking in favor of this. I do not know the owners. I visited there once about a year, year and a half ago, uh, so I have no vested interest in them at all, but I want to speak in favor of this. I think it uh, adds a level of uh, civilization to that neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Again, again, everybody, I'm going to ask you to leave if you can't refrain from clapping. Uh, so please, feel free to speak. We want to hear from you. Hello, my name is Rachel Mariam Smith, and I am a fan of fun, creativity, and freedom. I am a Santa Cruz resident and support Woodhouse blending and brewing. Woodhouse contributions to the historic city we love cannot be lauded enough. Our society has been rocked by a loneliness epidemic. Your positive response to Woodhouse permit requests is a reparation of the loneliness epidemic. Your positive response to Woodhouse permit requests is key to maintaining our vibrant local culture for all ages. It is, an import it is important to the 
It is important the Santa Cruz City Council approve master use and special use permits for expanded live entertainment and events at Woodhouse Blending and Brewing. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Next speaker, please. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Bill Holmes, Santa Cruz resident for 15 years, my first time before the council. I'm here to express my support for the permit. I think that, as you've heard from many people, the establishment and the uh, staff at Woodhouse has been a ter tremendously additive feature to the culture here. I came to Woodhouse as a patron and was just really surprised and impressed that they had managed to build and create such an amazing gathering space there, not just for music, but as you've seen in the outline uses, lots of other cultural activities. And I think it's really been um, severely hampered by the process that they've been going through. I think they've been very diligent in trying to address the concerns and provide more insight to help inform your decision. But I think it would be um, tremendously valuable to approve this. And as was noted by one of the earlier speakers, when you're measuring uh, decibel levels, obviously sound falls off quite a bit. So uh, if you're very close to the vicinity and as you even heard from some of the businesses around there, um, the noise is not particularly disturbing. The further that you move out towards residences, it's hard to imagine that it's um, that inconsistent with just hearing noise in a neighborhood. So I would very much encourage the council to approve the special use permit and uh, look forward to enjoying many more live experiences, community experiences, art experiences, readings at Woodhouse. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is <laughs> yep. Welcome. Hello. We're glad you're here. My name is Emma. I go to De La Viega. What I love about what <laughs> is that I feel safe and welcome. And we missed you, sick. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Emma. Hi, everyone. My name is Emma as well. Thank you, Emma, for speaking. <laughs> Um, I work for a local nonprofit. I'm a community engagement professional, and I've been working in the community engagement field in Santa Cruz for 10 years. I've lived here for 16 years, and I love Woodhouse. Um, I think it's really special that they provide, you know, a pillar of our community, a meeting place. I think it's really rare, as people have said. It's vibrant. Um, it's a safe place. It's uh, psychologically safe from people of all different backgrounds. They have all different types of events. Um, you know, there's roller skating, there's music. And not only that, but the owners, who a lot of them are here right now, they really, really care about our community. They live here, they have families, um, there's kids there. And I just, I just want to support them however I can. As I said, I, I work for a local nonprofit. And you know, this year, they um, provided the after party for this huge event we did called National Trails Day. They hosted over 500 volunteers. Um, it was a big deal. They had to close their business. You know, they weren't making money on that. They were losing probably a lot of money, but they did it because they care about this community. And I just, I think that this is a really important meeting space um, and community space for all of the residents of Santa Cruz County. And I support the expansion of the permit. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Booth. I'm a local comedian, perform uh, events all over the uh, city. And this place for the last few years has been a place that I've been running events. And the outdoor stage was a great uh, venue for comedy in the area. It was becoming one of the bigger and better stages. Uh, the Santa Cruz Comedy Festival is part of that a few times as well. And I think that, uh, you know, we're just using a microphone and talking and speaking just like I am right now, uh, probably at this volume, to be honest with you. 
uh, for about an hour and a half once a month. Um, and so I think that, uh, you know, it's a really great time. I encourage all of you to come to it. It's once a month on Thursdays. It starts at 7.30. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I really love performing. I do a lot of this for free out of my own pocket. I walk up down the street and hand out flyers for all this stuff. I really love cultivating community. And uh, I would just, uh, you know, really in hope that uh, and I'm in favor of this permit for Woodhouse. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Once again, uh, we'll, uh, next speaker. Hi, my name is Dina Slater. <clears throat> I'm retired from UC Santa Cruz, where I worked as a college administrative officer at colleges 9 and 10. And it's my first time speaking in front of you. Welcome. And um, I wanted to be sandwiched. I think I'm sandwiched in a good place, because we had little Emma, we had medium-aged Emma, and we have old Dina here. <laughs> so I, with, I'm 66, my hub, husband, who's 70. We love Woodhouse. It is so full of vibrant community. And so if there's anything that I could underscore, it's that it's a place for diversity, not just white people like me. And I go to a lot of places that people look like me at. But when I go to Woodhouse, I get to see people I do not see every day in my little neighborhood. I go, I get to celebrate. I've been to all kinds of different events there. Every time I go, I'm with young people, old people, medium age people, just enjoying life and developing community. So I strongly, strongly support this. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Frances Tracy Black. I'm a Santa Cruz resident and also work at 196 Architects in the Sash Mill. So we are immediate neighbors of Woodhouse Brewing. Um, I strongly support you moving forward with this because they provide the only community space that is within walking distance of our office. Um, we celebrate bridal showers and birthdays and Fridays, happy hour every week there. And we've never had any noise issues being neighbors. And like the previous gentleman said, as architects, we do do quiet work. And they've just provided a fantastic community space for us to utilize in that area. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. Hi, my name is Esther Francis, and I'm echoing a lot of what's already been said <clears throat> Excuse me, this evening. I experience Woodhouse as an oasis. It's intergenerational, it's multicultural. The people who own it are genuinely friendly. The people that go there to enjoy the food and each other, the exquisite music and dancing some of the most marvelous musicians. And for those of us who love to dance and love the community, it is just such a win, 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 win for all of us. And we've missed the outdoor. It's really been a deprivation. And uh, I just um, am in favor, 100 and billion percent for that. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Hello, um, my name is Nate, um, and I'm a local musician. I've performed at Woodhouse plenty of times. I've gone to a bunch of shows there, and there's nothing like when our community can gather and be in a place together, and all of the, you know, barriers that media put up, you know, get broken down, and we're able to be human together. And um, yeah, for the soul of Santa Cruz, like please help live music happen as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Hello, welcome. Hi, uh, my name's Don. I'm a music lover here in Santa Cruz for 41 years. Um, what do we want? Do we want Applebee's or do we want Woodhouse? I mean, a um, friend of mine who's familiar with this type of stuff said there's maybe a pre-existing non-conformity that doesn't mean much to me. I'm an electrician, but it might mean someone in the planning department. Anyway, I was told to say that. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Dale Knight. I'm an educator living in Santa Cruz County. And um, I keep thinking about art. Santa Cruz is about art. And Woodhouse, Woodhouse, eesh, 
is an artistic area. Not only the delicious beer that's an art form in itself, the music, the dance, the people, the community, it's an art just to put that together and coordinate that. So we should support that in every way possible whatsoever. And the art of growing a family is also something. And my kids, whenever I say I'm going to Woodhouse, they go, oh, we get to go. So I've raised my family at Woodhouse. Please <laughs> let them have their permit to keep this art, this beautiful community going. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Next speaker. It's most helpful if you can line up along here. And again, we welcome all speakers. Hello. I'm, I'm Michelle Murphy. Uh, I'm a local resident and energy efficiency consultant. Um, but on the side, I own Mountain Music Productions. And I started this little company a couple years ago um, when the pandemic happened and all the local venues, many local venues closed as well as restaurants, sadly. And then Michael's on Main burned down, which is where a lot of local bands used to play. Um, a large conglomerate took over um, the Don Quixote's, which is now Fountain Music Hall. And most of these places book national touring acts. But what we have here in Santa Cruz is some of the greatest musicians in the entire country. And getting over the hill is a drag. <laughs> Driving, you know, anywhere over 17 for a gig adds a couple hours and it'll take your life in your hands going over. I'm also a singer in two local bands. And so my ulterior motive was to make sure that my own bands would have a place to play. So I started working with the Veterans Memorial Hall because our, I'm putting on shows, self-produced shows, that helps vets. But there are precious few, if almost none, of local venues that let local bands play for their local community. And when it happens, it's so special. And, it, and I got to sing on the Woodhouse stage inside a few weeks ago. And, it, and I met a few of the people that I saw up here speaking. It's Santa Cruz is such a cool town. We deserve to have community, music, love, peace, all the things that we've all been craving for many years. So I completely support this permit and all of the work you guys do sitting here for hours listening to people talk. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Next speaker. Hi, hello, my name is Zach Latham. I am 26 years old. I was grown up in Santa Cruz from one to 26. I am currently a part-time bassist here in Santa Cruz after studying at Cabrillo Community College. I am also a full-time music teacher in Paro Valley Unified School District, teaching sixth through eighth grade music. I'm here in support of Woodhouse Brewing in this permit proposal both as a musician has been fortunate enough to perform there and experience that sense of community, but even more so as attending events there. One, I think the show up of the community around us today is more than enough to express anything I can really say about what they've been able to create, establish, and provide for all of us here. The largest supporting point for this proposal is I believe at the art core of the soul of Santa Cruz, what makes it a place where you want to be, where you can be happy and enjoy, is the aspect of community that's present. Both whether it's through music or art or other community events, it's what has made it a good life to be worth living. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Next speaker, please. Welcome. Hi. Uh, my name is Triana Felthaus. Um, I'm a local musician. I'm also a local music teacher. I'm also a local event coordinator. I've been lucky enough that um, one of my previous bands held a residency at Woodhouse for around a year straight where we played weekly. And what Woodhouse was able to provide the community, as a lot of us have already stated, is we have an opportunity to bolster local musicians local vendors, be that food, trinkets, art. They have local artists up on the walls. And what it is, it's a community showcase is what Woodhouse does. Woodhouse is a facilitating point 
for any way that you make your art. And what they do is they provide an opportunity for whatever prevent you want to provide. They're here to bolster your idea and invigorate you to be a part of the creative part of Santa Cruz, which is a pulse that we've been missing for a lot of years. And we have it in small pockets, but what Woodhouse has started to become is a hub where we all recognize and we are all familiar with what sort of creativity we are allowed to express and we are allowed to participate in. And that is such a wide field and that is so special to me as someone that has grown up here and has grown up doing music here. I've been in my family band since I was two years old and now I'm 24 and I get to do it for a living. And it is so fantastic to have a space that there is so much freedom creatively for all of us to express ourselves, to express our love that we have for each other and our own art. And it is such a non-competitive, all-inclusive, diverse space that we can be and become all of our visions. And all of those visions can tie together in a non-competitive family atmosphere where there are kids as small as babies to people in their 90s that all get to show up and enjoy you know, the beating heart of creativity that Santa Cruz has to offer and what a beautiful, you know, representation of what Santa Cruz is and what thank I know Santa much. Cruz is. Yeah. Thank, so you thank you for you. your comment. Next speaker, please. Welcome. Hi, my name is Sahar Al Khatib. As you have heard, you are listening first from the locals. I am a foreigner here in Santa Cruz. I've lived here for the past eight years as an international artist on an artist green card. Let me just say that Woodhouse, since the beginning, since the first day they opened their doors, I've been there and they can all tell you I've been there. I learned about beer and all the amazing uh, variety of beer from the best brewer in town, Mike. I've also, uh, as an artist, got to perform live on that stage. And I also do some amazing beadwork. I also got to vend there in some of their uh, amazing vendor or maker markets that they have there. I know that there's a way for us to um, allow this to continue to happen, for us to find a common ground for the neighbors and the locals to, and foreigners like me to feel comfortable in this venue and to celebrate uh, just being alive and together. And so, Please allow Woodhouse to continue doing what they're doing. Um, and it, it has become a safe place for me, especially because I'm not with my family here. I'm by myself, and I found a place to call home. I'm literally there almost every day conducting business meetings or dancing or drinking and having a good time and getting to network with everybody. So please consider um, giving them everything that they need to continue to thrive in this community. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your comment. Next speaker, please. Hello. My name is Devaria Trugman, and I'm a local artist. I'm a jewelry designer. I'm a drummer. I'm a dancer. And I've shared all these art forms at Woodhouse. And it's been an amazing space, as you've heard many, many times tonight, for art, for music, for gathering. And really, Woodhouse came up like during the pandemic when everything was outside. And they really created a space when things were so uncertain and um, people didn't feel safe. So they really created an amazing space for people to gather, for people to share. So I strongly support uh, continuing the uh, permit for outdoor activities. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Next speaker, please. Welcome. Hi, my name is Andrea. Um, I live over here on the west side, and I can say that Woodhouse is where I rediscovered um, how much I love live music and dancing, so it was critical for the pandemic, uh, getting out of the pandemic headspace. Um, I think looking forward, one thing, you know, I want to echo all of the supportive things everybody else has said, and I feel that in my soul. Looking forward, I think one critical aspect of this specific location and the outdoor aspect of this venue is that as Santa Cruz grows to be a more dense community and we need more walkable, bikeable, accessible spaces, um, spaces like these are absolutely critical and Woodhouse is a role model in how to do this right. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, please. 
Hello, my name is Catherine. Um, I used to work for the County of Santa Cruz, the Substance Use and Disorder Program, and one of my responsibilities was the Responsible Mer Alcohol Merchant Awards. And so I kind of come in with a different lens when I'm going to breweries and different places that serve people. And I just wanted to say that they've always done an outstanding job. They've refused serving me when I've forgotten my ID, um, despite being upset about not being able to get a beer that I wanted. Um, I thought it was really just like outstanding of them. Um, I never have to be worried about people being overserved there or inappropriate. I never have to worry about my friends getting home safe um, because it's just, it's done correctly. So I just wanted to come in with that lens. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Next speaker, please. Welcome. Hey, uh, my name is Alwa Gordon, lifelong Santa Cruz resident. Um, I'm a father, musician. Um, I'll try to keep it brief and concise as possible. Uh, in 2020, it seemed like a lot of people woke up to some of the social injustice that was happening. And I believe the city council went as far as to paint on the street, um, Black Lives Matter. And while I think that gestures are very important, I can say in my experience, Woodhouse Brewery has actually stood behind that. Um, I think you can ask anyone in this room, they continue to make a safe space for black and brown people. Uh, and as I look out at all of you, and I, I know that some of you may not understand what that means, um, but it is very important to this community that we have a space where you can walk into a building and you see someone that looks like you and you feel like, hey, you know what, I can be myself. So I strongly encourage you guys, put your money where your mouth is. If this is something that you want to support, diversity, inclusion, make this happen. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker, please. I live up on the west side above, uh, you know, a little bit further. And um, me and uh, a bunch of us here, we hike every Thursday night. We've been doing it for about 12 years. Live up on Highland and in that area. Hike through the open space, Pogo Nip, and we, we talk about everything. And we have a great evening. And we always, you know, hit the businesses on the way up, Shanty Shack and Woodhouse. And I, I've heard a lot of, you know, I, I love this place, but I, I – you mentioned the, a different lens. I'm a small business man, and I've seen what they've done, and they've invested in their business, and it's successful. It's working. Everyone loves that place, right? So um, in my business, I deal with a lot of uh, permitting issues as well, um, not, not in Santa Cruz County necessarily, but, um, you know, Park and Forest Service. And we've, we, we have this huge momentum, and we have everything ready, and everyone's ready to go and have a good time, and then you know, permit hits or something like that where we can't take the people and do what we want. So it's really applicable here that, um, you know, we like walking here. We don't hear the noise, by the way. We're not that far from, you know, up above. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a great place. And from a businessman standpoint, I have no real stake in the game. Like, I'm not a musician. I do love it there. I like the beer and I like the people and obviously the passion. But you got to invest in the community if people are if the people are investing in their own community, right? So we see high rises going up, we see all this stuff, and all these little things. Someone said about the walkability and all that. It's really important, you know. Like they talked about risk. We walk through Pogo Nip and then down the railroad tracks to get to these places. There's a much bigger risk there than going to have a beer at the Woodhouse. Thank you very much for your comment. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Tug, uh, one of the owners, and I just wanted to thank everybody for coming. Okay, let's give him a moment, huh? That's it. Uh, also, <laughs> we have you. a happy hour after this. <laughs> so, <laughs> fans inside. Uh, so, so, come out. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much for your comment. <laughs> Next speaker, please. I wasn't planning on speaking. My name's Shauna. I've lived in this community probably 35 years. And no, I don't want to go over the hill because I worked at Kaiser for 30 years and that was enough. So I just want to add one thing because I do feel very strongly about the sense of community it brings and what joy and happiness it brings to so many people. I was turned on to Woodhouse a few, uh, few years ago and I was 
astonished. I was like, how did I not know about this place? And um, for someone immunocompromised, I wanted to add that element because I did not hear that tonight. Um, I'm not a bar person. I don't go to bars, but this is a great safe place to go when it's outdoors. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your comment. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Ruben. Uh, I've been living here for five years. And in Woodhouse, being someone from very far, I could, fi I could find people with really good health. And more than a business, what I can see here is the American culture that I just discovered it tends to this place. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Next speaker. Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. I'd like to thank everyone for their extremely supportive and helpful comments. And um, it's uh, certainly more in my heart to hear all of these comments. I appreciate despite your enthusiasm, um, uh, you're participating in an orderly meeting. At this time, uh, we'll take it back to the commission for uh, further questions and deliberation. I'd like to lead off by um, thanking staff um, for finding a way to work through this. Um, I can imagine it was, um, it's disappointing um, that it had to come to this, but I feel like this is hopefully, um, we'll find this as a workable solution. Comments, uh, let's start with Commissioner Dan. Um, I, my only comments are that I am in strong support of this project. I actually have never been to Woodhouse, but I'm going to go. Um, <laughs> um, but this uh, conforms with the code, can, meets all the findings. Um, this just checks all the boxes and I'd be ready to make a motion. Okay, Commissioner Kennedy. I was uh, pulled up a decibel meter on my phone, and public comment was like, you know, 45 to 65. So 79 <laughs> is not ACDC in your in your ear. Okay. Um, Thank you for that information. I, I have a few comments. Too many. Um, this is a great project. Completely support it. I realize this ordinance is clunky. I want to stick up for a minute for like the real hard situations I've seen sitting up here with other alcohol or, or you know outlets that are not you guys so it's really nice to, for me to see one of these without the police department back there to tell us the litany of horrible things that happen to people so I really want to say that even though this ordinance is weird and I'd love to rock till 12 though I can't stay up that late anymore um, <laughs> that's why the ordinance is here and it you can see it's clunky it's weird it's funky but um, I'm also thinking of all the great spots uh, around town that like they all evolved as breaking some rule and then another rule, the Santa Cruz Mountain Brewery, the Humble Sea, I saw this guy's show at the Humble Sea, little weird <laughs> space. Uh, all the good spots in this town, like we're against code, broke code, didn't have enough parking, we're illegal and have like worked through this long process. So I just appreciate the artist's patience with all this government stuff. I'm fully in support of this. Um, I'm tempted to go further, but I just understand, uh, you know, like, let's stay open until 11, but I, I want to say again that um, bad things have happened regarding alcohol in this town, and I just want to say that um, while totally supporting everyone who spoke here. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Paul Hamas. Thank you to the chair, and thank you to everybody that came out tonight to speak. Um, I, similar to my Fellow commissioners, I totally support this, and um, I am thinking about other towns in this county, like Watsonville has the Plaza, uh, Capitol has the Esplanade, Esplanade, Scotts Valley has Sky Park. Um, you know, what do we have in terms of an outdoor music venue? We have really the Crow's Nest, and that's pretty much off the top of my head. That's what I can think of. And so, oh, Abbott Square, yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, I want another one. So. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't drink beer, but um, I do eat, and so, uh, and I've been to Woodhouse, and it's it's a wonderful venue, it's a wonderful place, and I too can uh, vouch for the, just the good feeling and the camaraderie, and just it's a very open and inclusive place, and um, I also want to say thank you to uh, staff for, you know, working it out, and um, making sure that we can continue to 
enjoy things here. So um, I'm also ready to support a motion and uh, get this passed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further comments? Commissioner Gordon. I also want to say thank you. And I have been to Woodhouse many times. And um, it's a perfect example of how we work with businesses all the time. Um, and that is a perfect example of how it's organically turned into what it is versus opening with a whole agenda and hope that they come. It's really been a, a truly a community built space. So uh, I'm also happy to support this. So thank you for everybody. I mean, this is a, <laughs> we've had some pretty big topics and not nearly <laughs> as many people. <laughs> so. This is pretty impressive. Good job, social media. <laughs> okay. Did you have Just a comment, more, Commissioner McKell? Just one more question, um, maybe for staff, maybe for the proprietor. Um, condition 40, is that part, is that a typical, again, uh, kind of, a, is it a negotiated point? Is it, it's about the um, alcohol not being produced by the manufacturer shall not be made available for purchase. I know a lot of uh Venues, they'll have a guest beer or a pop-up or something unusual. Can yeah, that's a um, standard condition that um, is often required by the police department, okay. and I think it just has to do with um, like a like a liquor store type of use. Um, but it's just limiting to um, the use of the space as like a brewery to um, sell their own product versus like a bar slash liquor store. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? Can you make a motion? Oh, yes, you absolutely may. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to accept the staff report and the recommendation to move the project forward and um, have, a, have a vote. Second. Okay, is there any further comments on the motion? In that case, could we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Dan? Yes. Gordon? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. McKelvey? Yes. Paul Hamas? Yes. Chair Conway? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Woo! Congratulations. Go ahead. Woo! Great, thank you very much. Don't get there, right? That's right. I don't think it was, that's the, first time the commission does have further business, so I'm going to ask you to it's continue down at Woodhouse. It's not really fair. I listen to this song literally this afternoon. It's a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yeah, 
happens back. Yeah, sometimes when it's the proper way. Hiking guy. By the way, I want to hike guy. And then does that with like a couple of short hands. Let me vote. Yeah. You bet. I was plugging uh, him. All right. Him. Yep. We've we've headed off. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Flea markets? <laughs> I wonder if you could get the get um, the weed. Right? Yeah. Do you mind going and closing the door and encouraging people to leave this weekend? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, I feel like we should all go ahead and see I think you guys need one of these kind of meetings. You guys need one of these kind of meetings every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, and it's just so shocking. Whoops. It's so shocking when there's so many folks here and there's nobody in opposition. Everybody's in favor. Yeah. Samantha, I think you guys need it more than we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah really. I think you guys need it more than we do. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're like, we're so All right, we are going to proceed with our meeting. If I could ask our remaining uh, participants, excuse me. We are continuing with our meeting. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. We're awesome. Till next time. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There you go. Um, Do we have any informational items? I do, yes. Um, Commissioner Kennedy um, asked us to announce the Ross Clark Memorial. Um, that is going to be held at the Coconut Grove on October 16th. Um, there is a website, rossclark.muchloved.com, um, and that will be updated with additional information. I don't know if you want to... Um, add anything else to that except that um, there's going to be a moment of silence that's planned at the start of the council meeting on Tuesday, uh, 1024, so October 24th. There'll yeah. be a moment of silence at the council meeting as well. It's a real hard gear shift from that last happy topic, mm -hmm. but uh, Ross is foundational in what I do with my life, and uh, he's really missed, so I just wanted to share that publicly. Thank you for sharing that information. <laughs> Um, and then additionally, at the council meeting last week, we had um, an approval of new direction for SB 35 consistency determination. This was a little bit bigger than the SB 35. It was um, first direction to staff that any modifications to the 831 water project, which was an SB 35 application, um, be returned to the planning commission. So they kind of had to do that because um, it's no longer allowed to be heard at the city council. So um, that application will be heard as an objective design review. So there's no discretionary um, review that's allowed. You're basically going to be reviewing staff's analysis of the modifications to see if they comply with objective standards. And if you agree or disagree with any of those areas of compliance. Um, and that's essentially all that is. Um, the second part Samantha, of Samantha, would that cover the, I remember the bike community was worried about the parking lot entry and there were like some very clear issues to be worked mm -hmm. out there. That would be something we could be talking about. Seems pretty objective. You will get a table that has all of our ordinances that were in place at the time of the mm. original approval, yeah, right. and it will say consistent, yes, no, and then possibly have some notes. Make an well. argument. Okay. Um, okay. So you, there's not a whole lot of flexibility to go beyond those objective standards. And what is the date of that hearing? Um, has not been agendized yet. We haven't even received an application for the modification. Okay. We've just been made aware that some are forthcoming. Um, the second part of that direction was that any other streamlined affordable housing projects with a density bonus will be heard for this sort of design review consistency at the zoning administrator public hearing level. Um, 
And that continues to have the option to refer it. So if it becomes something of a bigger policy question or we're getting a lot of disagreement about whether or not it's consistent with objective standards, the zoning administrator may choose to refer it to the planning commission level. But it would start at the zoning administrator public hearing level. Did you guys have any other questions about that? I have one comment, um, which is I know there's been some discussion about, um, first of all, belaboring in too many public hearings and too many meetings is one of the reasons why, you know, we've, we've lost some discretion in how many we have. But I also think that um, it's been, I've seen some really positive things happen from having two different public meetings, two different hearings, public hearings rather, rather than not just meetings. Um, I just, um, I can think of specific projects that where the first hearing was like, oh boy, everything's bad um, from the neighbors. And then in the second hearing, something really good that is a change has come out of it. I can think of the one over um, by Walgreens as one um, where, um, you know, it was it, here at PC, it was contentious. Neighbors had a lot of just flat out concerns um, and solutions weren't actually crafted at this meeting, but by the time it got to the city council, um, just the realignment of the intersection um, came up and that just flat out improved not just that project, but circulation over there. So I think, I think a couple of public hearings can be a positive thing. I strongly agree with that. I could think of half a dozen examples at the county where having multiple public hearings was a benefit for the project and the communities. Mm. So and I, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I'll recognize. Um, is, is that direction coming, uh, the direction around SB 35, is that coming down from the state? I, I missed that first part. So the SB 35 was amended right. at the beginning of this year. That eliminated the city council from right. the option to have this design review. Um, but they could, we could have that design review done by another commission. So staff had recommended, well, let's have it at the zoning administrator public hearing level. And they said, there's a lot of controversy around this particular project. So we would like that one to go back to the planning commission. Right. Um, but then any other ones that come in can be heard at the zoning administrator level. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious if that was like further direction or if this is just like we're cleaning things up from the beginning of the year. Thank yeah. It's sort of, sort of both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Commissioner Kennedy. So like, in my opinion, architectural quality is like nose diving with all this. You see the buildings here personally, and I know we can't like require anything anymore. Can we have like, assuming we had budget, could we have an architect give a presentation and just like kind of like <coughs> publicly scorn these folks into making buildings that don't look like big boxes? You know, if this is our only bite at the apple, it's one thing if I'm saying that, but maybe if an expert or someone else like just got on their knees and said, please give us something that, you know, where the control joints line up and the windows look good. Can we do that? Um, well, we did create objective standards. Mm -hmm. So that was the intention with that. The, the problem with the objective standards is that all of these large housing projects use a density bonus and they use incentive concessions and waivers to get around doing anything that um, uh, would either cost the project money or um, yeah. preclude construction in some way. And so unlimited um, concessions, right? Unlimited waivers. Waivers, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately we're not seeing a whole lot of like projects that are consistent with all objective standards. Um, and we are doing a cleanup of the objective standards to try to make them, I don't know, maybe a little bit more usable. Um, we have gotten feedback from developers and you know, we want to make them usable so that people will, will use them. Um, but, I mean, in terms of what you want to say to people while you're up here, that's that's your prerogative. All right. Well, help me out and, like, hi problems. highlight ones, you know, maybe, <laughs> or give me some bullets to work off of, because I do feel that like all that's left is, like, the pressure of people expecting more. I, I think Did that as long as it's not, I'm sorry, I think that as long as it's not impinging on the decision, mm -hmm. I think, feel free to harangue. All right, I'll prepare some remarks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and also staff, at very early in the process, we make a lot of recommendations, very strong recommendations that used to be requirements, but now are recommendations. And we've been trying to make those publicly known. We've been announcing them at the community meetings. 
and saying, you know, we'd like to see, you know, this moved or this changed and this design meet objective standards. Um, and sometimes we've even been posting those on the website. You know, if we give them a letter, we'll post that on the website um, just to make it known what we're recommending up front. But can you include that information in our packets? That would be good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Give us some ammo. I, I think mm -hmm. we usually do. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Gordon. I mean, I didn't think we were going down this path, but I will say it's something that's been on my mind in terms of how we might be able to um, help incentivize people following these. So we've had lots of internal conversations. Um, as an example, like Whidbey Island has a incentive program for builders and developers to incorporate art into their projects. Um, and with that, they get certain advantages in their submittal process. And so um, I feel like the planning department, I mean, the planning commission would be an appropriate place for us to brainstorm what those incentives could look like if developers and um, their architects or designers would be willing to um, get in line with what we want as a community plan. So um, I think it's worth a bigger conversation. It's not tonight, but um, I think we're all in agreement that something would, you know, that we'd benefit from that. So. There certainly is a lot of concern about design. It's not on the agenda tonight, but um, having, um, you know, putting out there that um, the Planning Commission is reflecting concern for design that I think everybody is hearing. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, and I'll also add that we, you know, I, I believe, I'm not in advanced planning, but I believe the attempt to incentivize with the objective standards was to lower the review level that was required. Thanks, Ryan. Um, if there was compliance with the majority of the objective standards, so if you varied from like five or less, then you could get a lower level of review. And then if you wanted to vary from more, then it would go higher and higher. But, um, but people use a density bonus, and so that didn't, I, maybe that just wasn't enough, yeah. Okay, right. well thank and, you. We'll be discussing yeah. that further um, when it's on the agenda and I think we all look forward to it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I just have a, a couple more. Okay. Um, the um, industrial policy, industrial preservation policy was also um, approved at the city council. So that was a resolution that was adopted by the council it is intended to preserve industrial lands for employment, which is a goal in the general plan. Um, it only allows for live work units and not just straight residential units in the industrial area. And there are limitations on the number of live work units that are allowed based on the square footage of floor area that is devoted to commercial industrial. Um, so that is also approved. Okay, thank you. No, I just think we should have housing in those areas, but that's just me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, the cruise hotel was approved at the Coastal Commission on September 12th. Um, so that will be moving forward at some point. Um, that's the one on Front Street. Um, ADUs, we're targeting October 8th, City Council, for the first reading of that. Um, in terms of future meetings here, we have nothing currently on the agenda for October 3rd. So we said, go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then finally, the existing building decarb um, item is going on October 17th. And um, that's all I have. Do we have a meeting on Okay, time? great. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Um, we have no subcommittee or advisory um, bodies right now, and we have no items referred to future agendas other than our um, expression of concern for um, design oversight. Um, so with that, um, I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you. <laughs>